Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about Tower of God Season 2, Episode 12. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. We're picking up in the aftermath of the hand of Arlen blowing up. And we see Bomb on the ship that he escaped with, uh, Gia Gia and uh, Kasana. And we also see that Ron and uh, Novik are with him, which I guess they were just nearby when the ship was formed, since they so they kind of got dragged along. But Gia Gia has our proclamation on what they're going to do. It was like we're going to build a team around Bomb, and we are going to basically create create the the image of the scary monster that is Juvio Grace because they want to add more fear and everything to his legacy and it's just hey we'll be the most powerful team like they say we are so and it's like they're going to start off but uh, it's like now that they've also killed Coon they've killed a son from one of the 10 families it's going to raise his notoriety even more and that's kind of the point once again, Rachel just wanted him dead, but Fogg also saw an opportunity. He's like, well, we'll kill Coon, even though it's like, well, she's asking us to do it, but we're not necessarily doing it because she wants us to. We're also seeing the benefit of it because as we learn later on from Huariun, that there is a division in um, Fogg. Not everyone's on the same page because everyone wants, I mean, there's a united goal of what Bomb is meant to be. He's meant to be the one that kills the family leaders in Jihad because he's the only one that can as an irregular but everyone want different people have their different approaches to how they want to go about it so some dissenting elders and slayers actually manipulated and concocted this whole situation in particular like Fug in general agreed to using bomb but they're the ones that concocted this most recent thing of killing Kuhn and building a team around him which uh, Jun Sung had talked about that previously of like, oh yeah, like we were building a team up for Bomb, uh, but, and, and it's something that Horyun kind of brings up. It's like, it's because of Bomb's master that he gets a lot more leeway than he can because like he is super strong, stronger than most slayers. So it's like, yeah, Fug can't ignore him when he makes a proclamation. So he's like, I'm looking after Bomb. I get to oversee a lot of stuff. So this is them kind of superseding him and going behind his back. You know, once again, it's not the entire organization. It's a select few kind of leading a coup in a, in a sense. So... I don't really remember if there's any real ramifications for that in a grand scheme of things. I don't rem really remember there being a shakeup in Fug because of this, but maybe there is, and I'm just not remembering. Because to my knowledge, I'm like Fug for the most part, like even with all this descent to some extent, just remains the same even after this. But I could be misremembering. But either way, Novik and Ran were going to like fight. Kasano and Gia Gia, but Bomb got in the middle, utilizing Novik's technique, which he immediately picked up only like, wait, what? It's like, yeah, used his technique against him. Uh, it's always, it's, I'm re, I'm, I'm catching up on the webtoon, um, and I constantly forget that all the time for whatever reason. It is a, like, all Bomb needs is to see something once, and he's able to repeat it. Funny enough, it's just so interesting, like, the thing I'm thinking about just happened while I'm reading in the manhwa, it's like, or in the webtoon is related to his master so it's just funny like timing and stuff like that but i was like i'm not fully fully call up yet i'm once again like i'm still like what maybe like a dozen or so chapters behind now i wasn't nearly as far behind as i thought it was i was like 30 chapters behind or something like that but it's like no i'm i'm like halfway to catching up either way so it just i i for whatever reason i constantly forget that he can copy a move after seeing it once I, just, I don't know why that I can never like remember that even though it comes up pretty frequently but it's just like it's just I need stark reminders every once in a while um either way Bomb is trying to convince Gia Gia to let Novik and Ron survive it's like I don't want to fight any one of Kuhn's um teammates so let them join us in the battle workshop and he's telling Ron like hey uh I'm sure Kuhn is alive like, please join my team. I'm on your side. And in that moment, like, Ron's thinking about it. And it's just kind of like, all right, kind of trust you. It's like, all right, so he's willing to kind of let this go, you know. I, I doubt he's kind of like, oh, yeah, Coon's too stubborn to die. It's like, there's no way that guy's just going to go out like that. So we do find out what ended up happening to Coon. He, uh, he was rescued by 
Wagnon and them who showed up in the aftermath of everything and they found him. We find out the reason why they found him is because they were looking for Viol's uh God, what did they call them again? Like the little inventory ball. They were like trying to track that and they did, but Bomb left it with Kuhn just so that someone he knew like right they might try and follow me and just in case they do, I hope that like Maybe, maybe he wasn't fully counting on his team. Maybe he kind of was, but he thought, like, if I don't come back, like, they'll follow me eventually, and hopefully they'll find Kuhn, which they did. I love that Yiwa didn't bother using scissors, because I think she said she couldn't find him or whatever reason, even though the scissors are right there. I don't remember her excuse, but, like, she's trying to burn away the bandage on Kuhn, which I thought is, is so interesting. She's like, right, it can't be put out by normal water, yet Kuhn just touched his hand to it, and it's like, I don't know if that's just a, hey, like, maybe he was able to use his Shinsu to, like, do that, or whether it's like a something from like the Kuhn family in general he was able to do that but yeah Kuhn being who he is immediately disarms uh Yuwa by binding her arms and then has scissors towards Wagnon's neck being like yo tell me what's going on is there more of you and so he sits down with them because he's still trying to figure out is um is he still that bomb is Viola, like, if they're the same person, he's still trying to figure that out. And those scenes, like, the one where he was in that white space and then later on in that dark space and trying to figure it all out, I'm like, I don't remember if that's straight up from the webtoon or is that something they just animated specifically for the anime? Once again, it's been a hot minute, so I'm, I'm not going to remember all, like, those smaller details like that. I think it's interesting juxtaposition, too, because we have that... And, like, earlier in the episode, we have Shibisu and his squad hearing the news about Kuhn being dead and the one who did it was Juvio Grace, which Rock gets told the news, but he's like, nah, that's BS. Let me go track down whatever scam artist is coming up with this BS. I mean, once again, he already lost the Black Turtle bomb, and now it's like, oh, the Blue Turtle, but he's like, he knows how crafty Kuhn is, so he's like, there's no way that bastard's dead. Kind of similar way that Ron uh, uh, approaches the whole situation, I'm sure. But yeah, like, Kuhn is just trying to rack his mind around it. It's like, right, this is, these people aren't fug, including someone from the Yeon family. It's like, yeah, this is like, they seem ordinary. It's like, would these be people really kicking it with a Slayer cannon? It's just like, there's got to be something more to this. It's like, and especially when he gets uh, the orb from um, Viol, he looks at it. He's like, yeah, it's a, it's a pocket. I, could, I always forget this name. Luckily, I remember that at the last second. It's a pocket. He's like, it's an A-rank pocket. The same one Bomb got from Yuri. So that pieces together. It's like, but it's like, really? If that's Bomb, why is he Why is he with them? Why didn't he come back to us? And it's like, yeah. Because uh, Kuhn was originally going to meet up with his team. And he, you know, sadly comes upon the scene of uh, the chick dude being dead. And Dan. And we find out what happened to Dan. And this was what I was kind of alluding to last episode of how effed up what Rachel does to him. Like I was like I was trying to dance around it. It's like you just see him bleeding. We don't know the damage of what Rachel did. And this episode, you find out just to be extra evil, she took away his legs because he made a whole point about her being on her own legs, and she stabbed his repeatedly, trying to make sure he never like is able. He relies so heavily on his own legs, so the kind of spit on hit this you know shoot venom at him for talking about her legs she ended up you know it's like oh she was the one that was pretending to be paralyzed and couldn't walk and now she's dancing around on her legs when coon isn't around and now dan throws that in her face of like stand on your own feet walk on your own feet and she took his away from him so it's a yeah and even left the message being like oh yeah fuck did this even though it's like yes technically fuck hired michael and apple and Rachel kind of, like, uh, hired them to do this. But it's not, it's, it wasn't technically a fug hit. That was, it's still kind of a Rachel hit. She just hired out to do it. She just hired fug to do it. Once again, they, it was a, a mutual situation of, well, it benefits her, but it also benefits them. So it's kind of a win-win situation. And so Kuhn is kind of like dealing with all that because he's just like, he feels like he failed his team because he's like, I was so, I was so caught up in my own revenge. I jumped at any opportunity. Apple and Michael joining, it just, it, he was so blinded by his revenge of on against Rachel for what happened to Bomb that he, he got played, you know? And now it's like, yeah, one team member's dead. He doesn't know what happened to Ron or Novik. Uh, the other one was left paralyzed. So he puts a lot of that on him. Um, but yeah, he goes out trying to figure it out. It's like, yeah, but if Bomb is V 
be all, why didn't he come back to us? And then Huarion shows up. It, uh, slight spoilers. That Huarion continues to always play that role. You just kind of forget about her for a little bit, and then she always just randomly pops up. It's like, hey, like I'm a guy. I'm meant to, you know. It's like I'm not really bound by the rules of the test. I kind of go wherever I want to, where I'm needed. And she feels cooning cool about like, yeah, basically the dissension amongst some people in Fug and how they want to approach the whole bomb situation. It feels a man about what happened. He's like, yeah, we faked his death and everything. And just for her coon, he punches her, even like busts his hand, punching her staff just because he's so infuriated. It's like, you did that to him. And now like what you want us, want me to enter the battle workshop or workshop battle just to win for you. And it's like, well, yeah, this will be the only way you can get to bomb. So I kind of proposed this to his team. So why not join with them? And he ends up talking to Dan, which, you know, we get a little more insight into Dan's situation. Before he joined Kuhn, he was on the team and every member on his team ended up dying because they ran across a strong opponent, which that strong opponent probably is someone specific. And I just don't remember. I, slight spoilers, but I'm like, I don't think it was Mad Dog, was it? I don't think it was. But I'm like, I do feel like I vaguely remember it being someone very specific that you do run into the series later, but I just don't remember who it was. It was like someone super strong that wiped out the rest of the team, and by the time he realized what was going on, he was already running away. And he, he hated his feet for that. It's like, my feet were just made for running. That's why when Kuhn came to recruit him, he just kind of gave up climbing the tower because it's just like he couldn't get over the shame of like, I just ran. I abandoned everyone. And he hated his legs for that. And now the irony is he kind of lost his legs. In fact, he knows that Rachel specifically could have killed him, was ready to, but stopped herself because it's like, I want you to suffer. She's like, yeah, I want to see what you're going to do with your legs in the condition that they are. He's like, she wants me to cry and beat myself. But he's like, no, I'm not going to like falter. Like, I'm going to like help you, Coon. We're going to do this. I'm going to just to prove Rachel wrong. Like, I'm not going to crawl into a ball, be sad. And I'm just going to get up and I'm going to keep moving so like like i said I, ever since dan's introduction like i remembered this storyline being what it is but i knew dan was still alive so i was kind of like it's sucky what kind of gets there but it still works out because dan's still alive but it's still just like once again this series does everything it can to make you go all right check off every box of things that rachel can do to make you hate her so once again i don't know if they're gonna do anything to redeem rachel uh, once again, interesting timing because like some of the stuff I've read most recently, she's popped up again a little bit. So um, still doing her thing, kind of kind of cheating her way to success. Because once again, like it, I talked about this in one review and I think I cut it out, but it is just a thing of like, yeah, you just you want her to get her comeuppance and it just never fully, fully happens. And you're just like, oh, this, this show will give you blue balls when it comes to Rachel's like the get back against Rachel and it's just maybe this series will end up not redeeming her maybe she'll be redeemed in Bomb's eyes I don't think so considering some future stuff I don't think so but I, I don't know I don't know what the end result of the story is going to be and what her role in all of this is going to be but either way putting all that aside Kuhn um and like Dan kind of motivates Kuhn to decide like right I will join with you guys and we'll end up seeing this through. He took Juan Ryun up for her, um, her offer. So obviously next stop will be eventually the battle workshop. They still have one more floor to go because they are on the 29th floor, but you need to, because the battle, the workshop battle, I always flip that around is on the 30th floor, right? I believe it is. I don't think it's on the 20th. I believe it's on the 30th. So they still have to get through that. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where the next episode takes us going forward. Um, obviously, once again, I'm still catching up. So I still got uh, one or two episodes left. I believe two because I think 14's already come out, I believe. so. Because uh, I once again, I went into this thinking this was only going to be a 13 episode season. And then I just randomly saw on YouTube because, like I said, I was a little behind. I was like, oh, second ending. So I was like, wait, there's going to be another ending. Why would it? I was like, oh. Is this season long? Because I was about, because I kept bringing like, there's no way they're going to get through the workshop battle stuff like this quickly. That's going to be a good chunk. So I w I did not know that this season was long. It's like 26 episodes, I believe. So it will probably still end the way I thought it was, but we're just obviously good. I, just, I think I underestimated just how much 
was in season two, even this chunk of season two, I think I forgot just how much there was. So I'm sure the like back half of this season is a hundred percent just going to be dedicated to the battle workshop. And like I said, how season two of the anime is going to end will most likely be where I thought this would end back when I thought it was 13 episodes. So like I said, it's just been so long that I underestimate like, oh yeah, there was like all this story stuff. So it's probably their way of like, not like, because, like, once again, you condense, like, 90 chapters in, into a single 13-episode season. I don't know where we are chapter-wise, like, how much so far this is covering. But, like I said, it's not going to cover the entirety of Chapter 2 because Chapter 2 is too long. Chapter 2 webtoon-wise is too long to be, like, even filled, like, even, like, in a 26-episode season, you're not going to, you're only going to cover, like I said, maybe a third of it. Because, once again, spoilers, like, I think that, like... My my main memory of, like, the rest of Season 2 is the Hell Train stuff, so... And what kind of adventures that leads to. I'll leave it at that, so... Either way, I, I'm going on tangents and stuff, but yeah, I, I'm excited to see where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of this. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.